changes like oh so and so first of all he will say oh son of so and so and he will mention your mother name not your father's name you know why because they say how can we be sure that he is the son of his father but we are sure that he is the son of his mother that's number one so they come down and he will tell you two angels are going to come if they ask you who's your lord say my lord is allah my prophet is muhammad my religion is islam that doesn't help if you are not living your life according to what allah said and what his prophet sallallahu said you will not be able to answer the questions in the grave you will not be able to do that you will not so this is a bid'ah this is an innovation this is not the meaning of the hadith of prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi when he said laqinu mawtakum so the, the first sign of good ending is saying the shahada and then you die. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, when he was dying, his son was telling him, Oh my father, say la ilaha illallah. He was saying, not yet, not yet, not yet. So his son said, what is wrong with you, my dad? He said, my son, this is the shaitan sitting near my head, biting his finger. And he is saying, oh Ahmad, you escaped. And I'm telling him, not yet until I die, then I will be only sure that I escaped of your evil. So this is even the shaitan. The shaitan receives you when you enter the dunya by hitting your navel. And he will be with you throughout your life. And he will not leave you even when you are dying. That is the shaitan. The second sign of good ending is sweating. To sweat when you are dying. Not to sweat because of the electricity. Huh? No. You sweat because something is happening in this body and the prophet sallam, said the forehead will be sweating the forehead so that is a good sign also among the good signs plague ta'un if this disease breaks in a country and you died because of that disease the plague then also that's a good ending you are shaheed drowning is a good sign because that is shaheed Abdominal, abdominal disease, any disease inside the abdomen, that is a good sign. If you die because the roof fell on you, something collapsed on top of you, that is also a good sign. All these are mentioned in the authentic hadith. A woman dying in the labor while delivering her baby, childbirth, she is shahida, she is a martyr, that's a good sign. If you die in the battlefield, protecting your deen, that's a good sign. If you die protecting your own property, that's a good sign. If you die on the frontier, ribat, defending the border of the Muslim land, that is a good sign. Also, if you fall off a cliff, that's also one of the good signs. If you are killed by a dictator or a tyrant, because you stood in front of him and you told the truth, that is a good sign. And you are a shaheed. And who's the best shaheed? The best shaheed is the one who will be killed by the Dajjal. That boy who will come from Medina and who will meet the Dajjal and who will say, You are the Dajjal. And the Dajjal will kill him, the Antichrist. And then the Dajjal try to bring him back to life and he will come back to life. And then the Dajjal tries to kill him again. The moment he brings him to life, the man, the young man will say, Now I am 100% sure that you are the Dajjal. You are the Dajjal. Also among the good signs, dying in Medina. Dying where? In Medina. So if you die in Medina, that's a good sign. Now we'll go to the bad endings. Causes behind bad endings. Why people, they have bad endings. Number one, there are certain causes behind that. Number one, wrong belief. Wrong aqeedah. Your doctrine is incorrect. So if you hold in your heart the wrong belief, then this is one of the main causes that your life will be ended in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with. So the most important thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is to correct your belief. Correct your aqeedah. Study the, right, the correct belief, the belief of the Sahaba. 
the belief according to Kitab and Sunnah, not the belief according to Aristotle, Socrates, Plato, especially when it comes to the issue of the names of Allah and the attributes of Allah. Many Muslims today, they don't believe in the, all the names of Allah and their meanings. Do you know this? There are schools holding that belief. They don't accept all the meanings of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. They don't accept that Allah is the Rahman ala al arsh istawa. So if you hold the wrong belief in your heart, this is one of the root causes of bad ending. So you need to correct your belief, number one. And the belief based on the Quran and Sunnah. Based on the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Quran. And the understanding of the Sahaba, Ridwan Allah alayhim. Number two, the nifaq, hypocrisy. If you are showing that you are a mu'min, but in reality you are concealing the disbelief. You reveal something, you show something, and you conceal the opposite. We treat you as a Muslim. Islam commands us that we treat you as a Muslim. But Allah knows your reality. Allah knows your reality. So you cannot hide that. So the truth will come when you are dying. And you will not be able to say it. Also, the love of dunya is another cause. Love of dunya. If the dunya is preoccupying your heart and your mind, then that will be a sign of bad ending. Also, if you leave and shun righteousness, you don't lead a righteous life. And you don't like and you don't love the righteous. You don't love the practicing people. You don't like them. So that is also another sign. Also among the causes of bad ending, that clinging and attaching our hearts to other than Allah. My dear brothers and sisters, and I'm talking to myself, our hearts should be attached to Allah, should be clung to Allah. If this heart is linked with Allah, then you will fear none but Allah. You will fear none but Allah. Unfortunately, I say it, unfortunately many of us, they fear human beings more than Allah. They fear human beings more than Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear them not, but fear me if you are a true believers. If you are a true believers, fear them not, but fear me. Because I will be your protector. Also, among the root causes, the issue of procrastination. We procrastinate. What do you mean by procrastination? Procrastination means I will do it tomorrow. Next year, inshallah, I will go to Hajj next year. As if he received a guarantee from Allah, he received a guarantee from Allah that he will live until next year. Though he is able to buy the ticket and go. So never procrastinate. Ibn Umar, he said, the Prophet and Bukhari, the Prophet Wasallam held me by my shoulders and he said when the day when the sun rises don't expect to live until the sun sets and when the sun set don't expect that you will live until the second day this is how we should be in life not that we are procrastinating i will repent later young men they say now you know let us have fun and all that stuff and then we will make Tawbah, we'll go and make Umrah. Or some they say, I will be a good Muslim after getting married. Young people, they say that. After getting married, inshallah, I will be Mullah, Mawlana. I will be, mashallah, Sheikh. So don't procrastinate. Go to the graveyard and see the graves. How old was he? Infant. Two years. How old was he? 12, 15, 20, 30. You can die anytime. So never, never procrastinate. Signs of bad endings. May Allah save us from having bad endings. Amen. Among the signs of bad endings, that you feel you are safe. 
as if the Jannah is guaranteed to you. Subhanallah. Amin makrullah. You feel you are safe? When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq said, if one of my feet, if the first foot is inside the Jannah and the second out, I cannot be sure that I will enter the Jannah. This is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Umar ibn Khattab used to come to Hudayfa, who has the list of the hypocrites. And he would say to Hudayfa, by Allah, is my name in the list? Allahu Akbar. Who are we? Who are we? This is Umar ibn Khattab. This is Umar ibn Khattab. He is asking Hudayfa if his name is included in the list of the Munafiqeen. Also among the signs, refusing the kalima. Many people, many Muslims, they died, they died. And when people were telling them, say, la ilaha illallah, they refused. They were turning their heads. Also among the signs, to die while committing sins. I'll just mention this. In our land, Arab land, a man died on the stage holding his musical instrument, holding his guitar, and he died. This is how Allah ended his life. And this is a message for those brothers whom the shaitan tempted them to fall into this sinfulness, music. Do you want to die holding your guitar? I'm sure no Muslim wants to die like that. No Muslim. Every Muslim wants to die saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And take this example, another example, 190 degree, dif totally different. Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk, Rahimahullah, from Egypt. He died on Friday. In the Salah, in the Sujood, in the Sujood, prostrating on Friday, that's how he died. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive us our sins. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and your deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala end our life in a way that pleases him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast on the state path till we meet him. Ameen. Amin, Amin. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Death is the long-awaited visitor. He will visit every one of us. Every son of Adam will be visited by him. The reality that no human being can escape who already started his journey. So always keep your mind preoccupied with the remembrance of death. Assalamu alaikum. Zakallah khair. Sheikh al Amri. We will now open the question and answers from our audience. In order to do so in an adequate manner for all those present here today, with the time which we have available, 
We would like to follow some guidelines during this question and answer session. Please keep your questions on the topic at hand, which is the long-awaited visitor, death. Questions not relevant to the topic, including any general questions on religion, will not be allowed. Kindly state your question briefly and to the point. Only one question at a time may be asked. For your second question, please go to the back of the line. Await your turn. When you come back to the front, you may ask a second question, time permitting. Non-Muslims, brothers and sisters will be given first preference to ask their questions. Kindly state your name and your profession before putting forth your questions. We'll begin with a question from the front, the gentleman with the red scarf. Assalamu alaikum. I am Ludovic Bonilla. I am actually traveling in India. And uh, my question is, uh, there is a fact that human beings used to um, uh, follow different spiritual ways, religion or, or other ways, uh, to face their own death. So, uh, in Islam, it's, uh, I, I think, uh, being pious and uh, leading his life in, a, in, a, in the way of Allah, uh, and by that way we can hope uh, going to Jannah. But others, human beings, are not Muslim and uh, they follow different their own religion or their own ways, um, spiritual ways, and some practice meditation to face the moment of, of death. And so I just want your opinion about uh, this, um, this people, this ways. Okay. See, my dear brothers and sisters, and this is something we have to make it clear. The way of salvation is the way of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anyone who does not follow the way of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is not treading upon the right path of salvation. So if you want really the right path and the tariq and the way of the correct salvation, the way that will take you to the Jannah, is follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the example. You want tazkiyah? You want purification of your soul? It is there in the kitab and sunnah. And only kitab and sunnah. And that's how the Prophet Sallallahu brought up the sahaba. Upon the Quran and sunnah. And we don't want our iman to be better than the iman of the sahaba. Because that is impossible. We just hope and cry to Allah to gather us with them, insha'Allah. So follow their footsteps. Kitab and sunnah. Anything else, don't accept it. Any way, any technique differs from the kitab and sunnah, it will take you astray. And I just mentioned this hadith, which is in Sunan Imam Darimi. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, he entered the masjid and he found a gathering in the masjid. And each circle, there is pile of pebbles, stones, small stones. And in each circle, there is a sheikh telling them, say, subhanallah, 100 times. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Say, alhamdulillah, 100 times. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, etc. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari immediately, he reported this to Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud, he did like this. He covered his face and he went to them. And he said what? مَا أَسْرَعْ هَلَكَتْكُمْ يَا أُمَّةُ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم How quickly, O oh followers of Muhammad, you perish. هَذِهِ مَلَابِسْ نَبِيُّكُمْ لَمْ تَبْلَى The clothes of your prophet, they haven't become shabby yet. وَهَذِي أَوَانِيهِ لَمْ تُكَسَّرْ And these his utensils are still intact. فَوَاللَّهِ By Allah. إِمَّا أَن تَكُونُ عَلَى مِلَّةِ by Allah, either you are in a way or deen better than the way of Muhammad or Muftatihi Bab Dalala, you are opening the door of misguidance. Choose. Is your way better than the way of Muhammad? No. So you are opening the door of misguidance. They said, you know Abu Abdurrahman, you know Father Abu Abdurrahman, our intention is good. He said that will not help. So follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Anyone comes and tell you do this, tell him, did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do it? He said yes. Show me. 
If he said no, he said sorry. Anything the Prophet ﷺ did not do, I will not do. I'm not ready to do it. I am just follow his footsteps. And may Allah make us among those who follow his footsteps. Allahu Akbar. We'll now take a question from the gentleman in the back. I am Advocate Prashant Magu here. I have heard your speech just now. In your speech you had mentioned that the Allah says that you fear none but you fear only me. Am I correct on that part? Now what I, my question is that why does the Allah say so? Don't you feel by saying so he inculcates a part of terror in the minds of the people who don't follow or who don't follow his path? This is my question. Okay. Yes, Allah is calling us to fear only him. But fear, fearing Allah is positive fear. A fear that brings about righteousness, brings about piety, brings about humility. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّةً For the one who fears Allah, there are two gardens for him in the Jannah. So this is the positive fear that brings you closer to Allah. And fear, my dear friend, is classified in different categories. One type of fear is prohibited. It is unlawful. You should not fear an idol. You should not fear a grave. What the idol can do? Nothing. That is form of fear is shirk. And there is another form of fear which is ibadah, act of worship. And that is to fear Allah. And to do the do's and avoid the don'ts. And there is another category of fear which is the permissible fear, natural fear. And that is to fear something like fire, wild animals. This is something instinctive, natural, built within us. Like Musa alayhi salam. فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفًا يَتَرَكَّ Moses, after he killed that man, when he pushed the man and he fell dead, the second day he was turning, moving around. He was afraid. So that is natural fear. That is natural fear. And there is another type of fear which is haram. And that is to fear a human being. For instance, you fear your boss. So he invites you to a party where there is alcohol. Okay? So you attend this party. Or you do something haram. So this type of fear is prohibited. You should not do this. Because fear is an act of worship, ibadah. And we have to single Allah Azza wa Jal with that particular quality. Fearing only Allah and Allah only. Go ahead. My question is unanswered. Because as you said that haram a man fearing his boss so he should not fear similarly then why he should fear the almighty Allah the fear element remains if he is fearing his boss definitely he will fear the Allah also on the contrary what I feel is that it should have been the Allah sh should say and might I think it might be saying also that you should love me you should follow my path but by saying so that you follow my path by means of fear, that does not uh, uh, come into the uh, ambit of uh, the Almighty. Okay, now I got your question. You see, my dear friend, we worship Allah and we fly to Allah with two wings. The wing of fear and the wing of hope. And that's how we balance our flight to the next life. It's not only fear. In the history of Islam, there is a group who worshipped Allah only because they fear Allah and they are known as the Khawarij. They don't know Allah is merciful. And there's another group who said Allah is the most kind, the most merciful. And they said, and those are called Murji'ah. 
And they said the iman of alcoholic and the iman of the adulterer and the fornicator is like the iman of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Two extremes and the right path that we worship Allah out of fear and out of love. And when we are dying, we only think good about Allah. We think good about Allah and we hope of His mercy. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He created, listen to this, Allah created 100 rahma, 100 mercy. And He sent down to earth one hundredth. And because of this one hundredth, we show kindness and mercy towards each other. And because of this one hundredth part of mercy, the mare, the mare, the animal lifts up its hoof lest that it steps over its babe because of this one hundredth part of Rahma. And 99 Rahma he kept with himself till the day of resurrection where he will shower his mercy upon all mankind. So Allah is the most kind. He is kind to us more than our mothers. Not only this, my dear friend, Allah descends every night in a manner suits his divinity. And he asks, anyone wants me to forgive him? Anyone wants me to grant him sustenance? Anyone needs anything? Every day. Allah rejoices. Allah becomes happy when we turn to him in repentance more than one who lost his she camel that has all his sustenance on top of the camel and he slept and when he got up he found his camel and he said out of happiness oh allah you are my slave and i am your lord allah rejoices and becomes happy happier more than this person that's the mercy in islam that's the concept of islam may allah guide all of us amen thank you sir for your precious lecture my name is Mahesh Maske. I am a teacher by profession. Sir, uh, you said that uh, we are the sons of uh, Adam and uh, Adam, Father Adam was created by Allah. Why, what is the purpose behind creation of Adam? Can I know this so that I can know the purpose of my very life? So what do you want to know about the creation of Adam? I want to know why did Allah create Adam so that I can know the purpose of life? So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us that He cannot be questioned, okay? Because He's the all-wise, the all-wise. So He does whatever He wants to do in His kingdom. So He created us, and He told us why He created us. The question should be, first of all, what is the purpose of the creation? You are created. You should ask yourself this question. How did I come into being? Have you asked yourself this question? How did you come into being? Who created you? What did he want from you? And once you get the answers to these questions, then you follow what he says. Assume that you are hungry. And then you found a table full of food under a tree. And you start eating. After that, you will ask yourself, who put this table here, right? True or not? Will you ask or you will not ask? What, sir? I could not get. You are hungry. Mm -hmm. And then you found a table full of food and you start eating in a remote area. After finish eating, you will start to wonder who put this or who brought this table. Yeah. Look around you and see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided everything for you. Everything serves man. Mother nature serves man because mother nature, my dear friend, is not more than animals, plants and inanimates. That is mother nature. So everything is serving man. So man should ask, what is my purpose here? See this pen has a purpose to write with. Yes. Watch to no time. Everything has a purpose. How about us? What is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? There must be an answer to that question so Allah who created all mankind he said I created you to worship me to worship me that is why Allah created us so that is the real purpose so we have to work on that and actualize our servitude towards him 
who has given us everything. Unless you don't believe in his existence, that is another issue. But assume that you believe in the existence of God, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now a, a question from the sister side. Sister, would you please state your name and profession? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assalamu I am Mehjabeen Sheikh from Mumbai and I am a student of sociology. Brother, it's a pleasure to talk to you because you are from Arab. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in also Arabi. So I like you very much. So my question is, the people who die in the Mubarak month of Ramadan and unmarried men and women who die before marriage, are these people called Shuhda? Will they go directly go to heaven? Please. Alhamdulillah. First of all, the belief of Ahl Sunnah, we don't testify and say so and so will go to Jannah or so and so will go to hell. This is, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if someone dies and inshallah these signs we mentioned are fulfilled, we hope inshallah that he is going to be in the Jannah. But we cannot say so and so is in Jannah or so and so in the hellfire. That is not our business. The Jannah, hell, heaven belongs to him. We only say so and so is in the Jannah if he told us. Like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Abu Bakr in Jannah, Umar in Jannah, Uthman in Jannah, Ali in Jannah, Sa'ad in Jannah, Talha. So those who the Prophet ﷺ told us, we say, yes, they are in the Jannah. But any part from that, anyone who says so and so will be in the Jannah, or so and so is shaheed, it is wrong. How can you say he is shaheed? Inshallah he is shaheed. Because we know the shuhada are in the Jannah. So we pray if someone dies like uh, a woman in labor and things like that, or someone died drowning, we hope, inshallah, inshallah, Allah Azza wa Jal will accept them, inshallah, and shower his mercy in them. Ameen. Jazakallah. Gentlemen in the front. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sartaj Ahmed, and I belong to a delegation. The name is uh, Islamic Peace Foundation coming from Kanpur, India. And uh, I'm, my pers I'm personally related with the exports business there in my city. My question is that the human being is the composition of two things or three. One is body, second one is soul, a third one is nafs. And again, it's related with the same thing that who will be punished hereafter? This is a good question. Thank you. Is it soul and body or there is a third element there which is the nafs? You see, first of all, there is a one complete lecture I gave on the soul. So go and watch it. That's what I recommend, first of all. Second thing, the, what is nafs? Nafs, it is the combination of the two. The body and the soul. So the body and the soul is the nafs. Is this clear to you? Yes. Very so the body and the soul is the nafs. So mainly it is the body which is the material part and the soul, which is that which gives the life when it is entered into the body. Which one will be punished? In this life, the body receives in this life. Yep. Okay? For instance, in the sleep, the soul in the body? Tell me. Body in this life, of course, the body. Okay. So in the sleep, the soul is not in the body. And you have a nightmare and you get up sweating, right? So it is the body that feels the pain and the soul is with Allah. In the grave, the barzakh, it is the soul and the body. Though it, in, the, in the grave, the body was, the ribs as in the hadith, they uh, uh, go into uh, each other and the soul is not there. But there is a link as Imam Ibn Qayyim said. And in the Jannah or in heaven, both of them. So they are different phases as Imam Ibn Qayyim explained that rahimahullah ta'ala. Is this clear to you, brother? Yes, very clear. Jazakumullah khairan wa yeah. alayhi. Thank you for your question, and that will be the last question for this session. I thank Sheikh Al Amri. Yeah, we've concluded our time, inshallah.
big sound great quality one name big sound great quality one name